Good evening everyone and welcome to another night of painting miniatures for <coughs> some of my friends from the uh, Nano Rebo project. I also don't really have a lot of boys uh, today, so winter kind of hit us about a week or so ago. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't know if it's winter or if it's just a few days of cold, but I got something in my throat ever since. Nothing serious, nothing bad or anything like that but my sound is very low um, that's odd is it better now I mean it looks pretty okay uh, but thank you Vanessa so anyway we can do we can do something about that um, hopefully this so anyway we are painting for one of the other net is I mean now now it's all the way up in the red so that does not sound good but this should be this is kind of the normal level so that should be good but anyway we are painting this guy here um, called Timothy favor and to be honest I can't actually remember I've got all the characters confused in my head so I can't remember exactly what who Timothy is and what he's doing but if me shows up I am sure she will tell us all about him. So basically, his paint scheme is kind of brownish. And with a little bit of yellow trim. <coughs> uh, so it's fine. <coughs> Let's see. We need. So, need some color for his skin. So, yes, yeah, so I'm just setting up. As uh, I told some of you, Yesterday I was supposed to be streaming, but then my internet connection basically just went bonkers on me. The short version is that the for some reason the DNS lookups are really really unstable once in a while. Uh, and even though it might have been possible to, to nudge it into kind of working, I didn't want to risk it suddenly dropping out in the middle of the stream. So, instead we are here today. And it's a little later than usual because I spent the evening at the Bastard Cafe in Copenhagen being a <coughs> playtester on a new game that I'll not tell you too much about because I honestly actually don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it or not. I mean, they, they had it in the cafe, so it's not like it was super secret, but still, out of respect for the designers, they may or may not uh, want people to hear all about their exploits so I'm not talking about it on, I'll, I'll not talk about it on stream at least I think that's a decent thing to do so anyway how are you tonight Vinisa and how far are you with the uh, nano remo getting close to the 50,000 words Yep. 
I'm trying something new today and actually getting <clears throat> at least most of the colors up that I'll be using. So just take, giving them a good shake. That way I hopefully will just be able to just print him a lot faster. Well, maybe not faster, but with fewer breaks. This yellow is kind of dying on me. Just need to. I'm probably gonna need to go back and forth a little bit between the actual view here and the image picture I have of the paint job she's looking for. I also found out something weird <clears throat> when I actually though sat down here before and just getting things ready. I noticed that apparently the sword is supposed to have at his side. <clears throat> yeah, well, he, he doesn't actually have it. Um, must have been a small mistake in the print uh, print job. And the, the, the handle broke off. So he actually only has a scabbard. I Means the miniature is, of course, going to be a little bit different because of this. But I don't think it subtracts enough that I you know, should not be, be painting him. Oh yeah, um, no, my question for you uh, was just basically how, how is it going with, with Nano and you know, life in general? Yeah, getting close to the uh, 50,000 words. I'm guessing that's a yes. Okay, so 14,000 words of active writing, and then you have all the prep on top. That's good. That's really good. Congratulations. I mean, I know the prep words account for a lot uh, of, of raw material.
Yeah, see, exactly. <coughs> so 14,000 words in the actual story, and then another, what, 40,000 in prep words. That's amazing. Good job. <coughs> And yeah, I know that I'm the kind of person who actually sometimes say stuff like how, how easy, that it's not how easy, but that it's easy to actually get to 50,000 words. The thing about that, though, is that, <clears throat> yes, writing 50,000 words is very doable in November. <clears throat> but writing 50,000 useful words, that is an entire, uh, entirely different matter. So yeah. Now, about Timothy here, I'm actually going to do another dip, like the one I did on poor Gasty from last time. Because after giving him, he's the, <coughs> he's the red-haired, orange-haired dude sitting there in front of the um, Stormtrooper. <coughs> but he, no, after I gave him a, a coat of matte varnish. The the shininess of the dip completely vanished, and that made all the colors just pop out again. It was really great, really really cool to see that it actually works in practice. I mean, I've seen it work in YouTube videos and so on, um, but it's a long, long way from seeing other people doing it to sort of experiencing it myself. Also because I use different varnish than. <clears throat> then, um, for instance, Duncan Rhodes used, he has some kind of spray varnish, and the times I've tried it with, you know, matte varnish and a spray can, it has never gone well. There's, there's something about it that, when I do it, I don't know if it's the temperature or humidity in, in Denmark, <clears throat> but I've done it in summer in relatively low humidity, I've done it in... <clears throat> In the spring, I've done it in, well, not winter as such, but in colder weather. Um, while, of course, heating up the the rattle can uh, so it gets to roughly room temperature. And despite all of that, it always gives this sort of ghosty, gray, <clears throat> really annoying thing. So... <clears throat> So, Vanessa says that in the past three days under the regional war, we found out that switching between Danish and English on top of switching point of view every time I've done one sprint. It works really well for chasing scenes. I'm guessing it says chasing scenes. Uh, my chapter 2 was a scene where Akila had stolen some things and was on the run from the guards. Yeah, that sounds cool. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. You know, switching back and forth. That sounds like a, like a good thing to do. You know, shifts the, uh, the the attention to different things so you don't like have well not a monologue I don't really know what what it's called if you just have one person describing one person for a really long time but instead you can go back and forth and you can see the guards chasing you can see <coughs> Akila whatever yeah I think that, that adds a lot of um, a lot of uh, I don't know action or just uh, Dynamics to the scene. I don't know. Yeah, no, but good job. Good going.
So yeah, no, um, because I'm doing the dip on Timothy here, also why I didn't do a cenital highlight on him, just like with Gasty. Because I think the cenital is just going to go... Well, I mean, <clears throat> the dip is going to make it somewhat darker, since it is going to be in a, in a dark varnish lager. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to have really... <coughs> well, the color scheme doesn't really give a lot of uh, room for really bright colors. It's um, you know, brown, sort of grayish green. But what I can do is I can, instead of giving actual senatal highlight, that's going to leave a large part of the miniature black or nearly black. <clears throat> so it's so much better, I think, for the, for the dip technique to have just a plain, uh, I went for a light gray primer here. And yes, I am removing cat hair from the mini because they get in everywhere. One there got stuck in with the uh, primer. That's fine. Right. So. So, I wonder if maybe I should send me a, a direct message. I'm not sure she's seen it um, on our Discord server. Oh, well, yeah, I actually, I just wrote you um, to make sure you didn't uh, miss out on it, but hey, welcome. <clears throat> so, I have not gotten very far, so we haven't missed much. <clears throat> but now we need to find a good color for, basically for, for most of him, I guess. <clears throat> so, we'll just go do that. Oh yeah, I man. These are the other than you, you know, just writing that your sister's gonna pick up the cat. So what, what's the story? How's it gonna be? Is he, um, have you find a, found a new home for him? And also me, if you want to introduce uh, Timothy, please go ahead and do so. I think it's only you and Vanessa, so... But it's, uh, I mean, the video is going to be on YouTube later on, so uh, people will be able to see it. Okay, so, but is it going back to your sisters for real or for, you know, for good or whatever? Um... <clears throat> What are you finding a new, another home for him? Yeah, 
Okay, so he's going back to your sister. That's fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna. I'm currently working with a, one of the smaller brushes. I'm just gonna do in the the edges of this color. This is basically his coat. And then I can switch to a larger brush, and hopefully it'll go super fast. <clears throat> I'm hoping this does not turn into a midnight show, but we need to paint him. Oh, and we, it actually seems like there was a small mistake when I printed out the miniature. Um, the handle of his sword have somehow broken off, so that's going to be missing, or maybe I'm going to do a, a round two uh, with a new mini at some point. I only just noticed as I sat down to paint and started comparing you know, the, the colors from, from Hero Forge with the mini, and it just kind of went, wait, that's odd. He doesn't have a sword. So, but I mean, at least it broke in <clears throat> kind of a good way. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> when is I, I? I'm sure you love a uh, a midnight show, but I, I have to work tomorrow. So um, I prefer it to not be a midnight show, but still. But me, what about you and Nano Remo? How are things going for you? <clears throat> Have you reached the magical fifty thousand words yet, or are you still working hard? <clears throat> oh, there we go. Timothy is a blacksmith apprentice in the realm of Dragonia, <coughs> in a magical world called Diagos. The world is also filled with magic and magical creatures like dragon shifters. He's not a fan of dragon shifters because some rogue shifters attacked his village. I mean that'll that'll piss anyone off really. Um, I know I would. I mean, if I had a village, I lived in a village. Especially if I had a village and someone just came and attacked it, I wouldn't be happy. Now, I also have to think about who I want to paint next time. <clears throat> ah, congratulations, you also hit the 50,000. Wonderful. Now, um, about the models and sending them to you, I'm actually going to wait until Nano is over, 
because I want to have some some photos of the minis next to each other. So this is going to be the, the December project. We'll be shipping them out to people. Should still be able to reach you before Christmas. <clears throat> but we'll see. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if it's Christmas gifts. I mean, you already knew you would be getting it. So it's kind of in many ways arriving a little late, but yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I will ship them out and get all of that sorted. I need to find a good way um, <clears throat> to actually pack up all the minis uh, and wrap them in a way that they can hopefully fit in small, one of the small bubble envelopes. Um, I really don't want to do... Well, actually, you, you can get the small um, cardboard boxes and still send it as a letter, I guess. I mean, we don't have a lot of viewers right now, um, so. And I think you were actually both here last time when we spoke a little bit about secret stuffs. But, I don't know. Now, I should mention that, as always, the music we're listening to is the wonderful Adrian von Siegler. Does a lot of good stuff. Um, a lot of really, really nice atmospheric music, instrumental. If not all of it, then definitely most of it. Which means it's really good for just having in the background if you're painting like here and, and talking over it. Or if you're reading, writing, or just want to have something really pleasant in the background. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, the idea with all of this was that you should not be paying for it. Um, I mean, I don't want to add, give you any kind of costs just because I have some silly ideas about a project. Um, but we'll sort something out. It might actually, if, if some of you, I don't know how many of you actually live in, in the same town. Um, I mean, that would make it easier if, if we just send one box to one of you and then take it from there. But yeah. No. But anyway, as I said, since you're both here, and we did talk about it a little bit last time, 
I do have something. I just need to make sure what I have in, in view now. <clears throat> I don't know if you can you know, recognize any of all of this. <clears throat> So, yeah, you've, it's gonna give you like a few seconds to actually look at this. <clears throat> I think especially in media you will be able to recognize a, a thing or two. See something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a couple of things. And let's get that off to the side again. Hide it away. So yeah, I've made some uh, some progress so far with with printing all the minis. things before I can actually try and do the, the spell effect you made, Vanessa, but I'm super keen to try it out because I know that it can look absolutely wonderful. <clears throat> yeah, a blast is super cool. Um, it's got its little cat as well. Really nice. And as, as I said, I mean, the first two minis I chose because of the pose. That was just way too much to just pass that up so but this one here I actually I like I actually like uh, me the way you sculpted him um, and the way he's just standing you know, all, all of those things so um, and then of course the the backstory about him not being your main character if I understand it correctly uh, but being a helper and assistant <clears throat> bringing him out into the light a little bit so yay more cat hairs Uh, by the way, me, you, would it be okay for you, with you if I don't actually print all the uh, paint? Sorry, paint all the individual cobblestones in in different colors and just do a single color. It's sort of an assistant to Mia, and I'm not even sure I'll use his POV in the story. That will be a new way of writing for me. Yeah, uh, you you you're good with the cobblestones. I'll add though some uh, base material to give it some more 3d effect some some gravel basically not a lot just you know a little bit here a little bit there um, to give it a little bit more texture uh, and 3d effect i think that's gonna look super cool and also the the way that um <clears throat> Hero Forge does these, you know, the, the base with the different colors on it. Um, for the cobblestones here, I think it doesn't really look very natural. So, why is my brush splitting?
yeah are you guys busy looking at you know black friday or black week as we call it here in denmark it's kind of this super weird thing we're taking the american tradition of black friday with you know the the super crazy exaggerated uh sales discounts and then we just do another week of normal well some some places have really good discounts but a lot of them it's just kind of like oh this is just an excuse to call it um black week and we'll give the usual discount and hope people buy more stuff just because we call it black week i mean i saw some of the ads <clears throat> i think it was from uh, for the sort of electronic store called power <clears throat> um but um one of the things was just some, some random computer game that was, you know, 7% off, which is like almost nothing. Um, so it's kind of sort of, oh yeah, you, you're using that to advertise your Black Week super discounts. <clears throat> yeah, also because then you can actually do the, you know, the, the insane offers, but they're not doing that really here in Denmark. They're just going another week of the discounts they have all the time anyway so i mean i think it's just it really but i mean that that's that's the retail business for you anything they can do to try and drive up the numbers and make us buy a lot of stuff we don't really need mm. yes yeah, just this january sales you now after christmas is over and you spend all your money on christmas um, uh, gifts for everyone they want you to go out and buy more stuff it's just exactly that or like when they have um, stores have their birthday and I mean it, it's fine that it doesn't have to be in the actual date they can just only do a <clears throat> birthday discount once per year obviously uh, but as I understood the rules when I looked at it at some point basically you're allowed to have a full week that you call your birthday week then you have another week that you call uh, black uh, not Black Friday, but Black Week to just kind of simulate or we'll bake that. Then you have whatever offers you want to do. It's just kind of like yeah, January sales, as you say, or basically anything. Just call it a discount. And sure, it's discount. I mean, we do have some instances to keep a little bit of an eye on the prices. Uh, I mean, the, the rules are that you can only call it a discount if it's actually a discount compared to the normal prices. And then it gets a little bit fuzzy about how do you see what the normal price is. <clears throat> but it's actually you know, possible to, to look at some of the historical data or something, whatever. Some people keep a little bit of track on it. And a couple of companies over the years have been you know, caught claiming that something in a, is a discount when, when in reality it's not. So yeah. And then I also kind of find it somewhat odd that in the middle of uh, a pretty big inflation and a lot of um, prices going up, we still have a full week of discounts. It's just like, okay, so all this complaint about you know, people not, you know, having a financial problems and especially heating bills and electricity bills skyrocketing then we as consumers I'm kind of curious about if we actually use all those black week offers or not because a part of me would actually like to think that we we don't but we actually save the money for, for bills um, but if it turns out that the retail business has like a record year or whatever <clears throat> Then it's it's kind of hard to fully understand that you know, the financial trouble thing. If you know people still have offers or have have money to buy all those things for usually um, luxury goods. I mean, th this is not you know normal day to day things like you know food, milk, toilet paper. You know. It's not those things that are on sale. It's TVs, computer games, yeah, consoles, clothes as well, boots, shoes, whatever. And that's kind of 
I mean, shoes and clothes, absolutely, you, you need that, especially if you if you have children, whatever, then yeah, it's a good way to save some money if you're thinking ahead. But it feels more like just the normal consumer stuff. Or am I completely wrong? Oh, that's a little more color on him. <coughs> yeah, and it's like, as you say, people complaining over Hini Bill. And again, you have to remember that it may not be the people complaining that are actually out buying in stores because there is a large sort of um, gap between people uh, pay wise. But still, it's um, I think it's still important to remember what is going on. Um, okay, so that's a bunch of black, and some black, and some very dark brown, and the gray stuff. Uh, okay, so so I'm gonna be doing a dip. Some of it, this I'm gonna paint after the dip, like the um, the head of the hammer. Because it's so bright, it doesn't really make sense to do that uh, before I'm done. But we do need to paint the scabbard. We do need to do the belt and some stuff like that. Yeah. scabbard you want it done roughly like that okay It's kind of interesting. This actually comes off slightly more orangey than I recall. That's fine. Um, it's gonna, I'm still going to get the the dark brown wash. It's going to you know, change the tint a lot. to reach this part here I gotta say you know, with with the uh, 
the minis you have made, you've actually challenged me quite a bit in, in try how to reach you know, certain parts of the minis. Um, like the scabbard here, which is halfway blocked by the, his hand. Um, <clears throat> and from the down, down uh, from the underside or whatever, from, from below, um, the entire base is kind of in the way, so it's a little tricky. I mean, but at the same time, I also have this, this opinion that if I can actually see a spot on the mini, then it should be possible to, to get a paintbrush in there. <clears throat> and that's the theory. What happens in reality is usually something different. Also, we need to factor in the fact that my hands are still shaky. So, there is also that. And we just need some gold for the tip. Did start to wonder how we'd be able to paint behind the cape. Okay, yeah. Um, to be honest, I hate capes for these minis. Um, and <clears throat> the people from a role-playing group that I usually paint minis for from you know from Hero Forge, I've actually specifically told them that I don't want any capes or cloaks or long coats or anything like that because it's just so terrible. Um, <clears throat> but oh, thank you, Vanessa. It's hard work time. Yeah, yeah, just relax and, and you do you. Uh, I, I appreciate the look. Um, no, but actually what I, what I usually do with the capes like that and also especially the, the way the capes are with Mia um should mention that Mia is one of Mia's other characters that I one of the ones I showed just before um and what I'll be doing with someone like her is that I'll make sure that it's get gets uh, a lot of priming first so it's actually black and then I'm mostly just going to go with that because when it's just standing nobody's going to be seeing the inside of the cape um so it's still gonna look, still gonna look good, and and having it black underneath, <clears throat> um, having it black underneath actually um, helps when you know the the illusion of shadows on the miniature. So in that sense, mini uh, a sort of capes can actually work. But yeah, it's just some of the billowing capes they have on Hero Forge. That's just so annoying because it it it's very visible what happens you know, underneath them, uh, and yeah, yeah, need more red. <clears throat> and yeah, it's as you say, it, it's shadow, so it makes sense to do it that way. Actually, I have a pretty good example of what I mean with this, because if we take, um, let's take, let's just need, take Mia here. <clears throat> I mean this, I can actually paint a large part of that, <coughs> which means that, um, let's say I'm, I'm doing a, a, a brown cape, for instance, I could, you know, prime her black, and then the cape out here, what I can see, I could sort of build up a, a black, a, um, brown gradient so the edges out here is actually proper brown and then just fades into the black uh, part of it also just drop my paintbrush That's it.
Um, whereas something that's actually worse than that is um, the blast is called. Because here you can actually see so much of his on the inside of his cape. And yes, I can actually get to paint the cape, but painting his shirt underneath. Okay, now that I'm playing with it, I can see that it's actually possible to do it. But that kind of cape is actually way more difficult um, than me is. And then we have something like, like this guy here with more cat hair. That's just horrible because then I kind of have to sort of paint around to get the legs painted and everything. But I'm going to give it a shot. I also need to clean these minis before I prime them. There's so many supports left. Anyway, those are other, other models for another day. Uh, let's go back looking at the picture. We have a bunch of this, a bunch of that. Oh, shoot. There's a lot of shirt there I didn't even start to paint. Then we have the backpack. Do that. Okay, so. <clears throat> Brown and sides and straps are going to be black. Well, the straps are going to be yellow, but the. Um, whatever it's called. The thing I'm th thing about thing is going over it. Now I'm going to be sort of etching in all of this in a, a sort of sort of greenish color that's going to be tinted down by the wash. Um, So, but anyway, um, as I mentioned earlier, I've been at the Bastard Cafe, which is a board game cafe here in Copenhagen. Um, tonight we did a playtest, and what I really like about those uh, gameplay tests is, of course, you know, trying a game before it comes out and before it's you know, fully finalized is always interesting. Um, and it's also fun to get the feedback and just sit and just chat and talk um, and it's you know, me and uh, uh, four other of the the volunteers there sitting there so these are and uh, I mean I play a lot of board games I think but these guys play way more board games they also play heavier board games most of them so this was a lot of discussion about people who know so much about playing games it's always so fascinating to hear you know their input and their ideas and thoughts and so on. So that was always that was interesting. But it's probably I was gonna need some hair painted at some point. And I think I have a good idea for that. Especially if I look at how <clears throat> much actually shown through in that. Ah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. Right, on to the green. At least it kind of looks green to me. So that is what he's getting.
Um, he says, I think the most complex board game I have played would be Settlers. Years ago, we played that a lot with my brothers. Yeah, I mean, Settlers was a really good uh, game. Did a lot of um, <coughs> a lot of things for you know bringing board games sort of more into the mainstream. Mm. I think there are well, there, there are games I like better than Settlers. But I know it's still a hugely popular game. <clears throat> so this and this and that. A little bit on the boots, maybe. Yeah. So green it is. It's just basically going to be all roughly, roughly speaking, all the edges are going to be green. And if it seems like a somewhat bright green, you would be absolutely correct. But it will be dulled down a lot by the wash when we dunk him in the varnish. It's a bit, a bit, a little bit like. Um, what in in the in the wild west with the the tar and the feathers kind of like dunking this poor helpless guy i mean he's a blacksmith he's not entirely helpless i guess hmm ah uh, yeah to try to play one of the expansions for Settlers. Do you remember which one? And yeah, I totally killed you. Well, then hopefully you'll be glad to know that there are games that I feel uh, have a lot simpler set of rules than Settlers and are easier to uh, get started with and get into, but which in my uh, opinion have a lot more um, sort of deep gameplay to them and with that also a lot more fun and replayability and less less randomness so a lot has happened in the board game area or area was seen whatever um, in the past many years hmm. I remember playing a lot of settlers um, at the dormitory where I lived. Uh, we also played, you know, normal card games. We played a lot of whist as well. Yeah, it's okay. You can remember which one it's. Uh... There are a lot of ex expansions by now, I think, so it's kind of hard to keep track of all of them. <clears throat> okay, so Timothy knows how to swim, so we can dunk him in the varnish, says Mia. That's good. Of course, he is wearing you know, his full gear and his hammer and all that, so... Um, still going to be a challenge for him, but... I promise I will take a solid grip on his, well, on the base, probably. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know, can you see the green? Yeah, you kind of almost see that the, there's some some green that's kind of the uh, the purpose of the, the 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 goal what i'm going for here is to make it visible but not super visible it's very subtle um in hero forge so i'm, I'm trying to to do that as well here <clears throat> Thank you. He says it looks good. That's always nice to hear.
you know, actually me outlining these, um, the shoulders here and stuff like that is perfect training because I've got some purple space marines waiting to be painted. Actually kind of sort of stormtroopers slash space marines. General look and feel of stormtroopers, but with the bulkiness of space marines. <clears throat> Um, there's one spinning over there on the the mini the mini camera. Yeah, I mean they have you know the the armor panels that really really do well if you just slowly just outline it. Now I just need to see the back of him. Mm. So a bit of green on the, <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit of green on the boots as well. I think that's kind of what we're going for. Yeah, just a little. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a bit of a hard time seeing how much of his boots is actually kind of like green and how much is just the highlight so i'm just gonna go i can you know, go with the flow and, and do something and we'll i mean it's gonna be fine i say that a lot don't i when i paint i gotta just go this oh, i have no idea what i'm doing but it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine what could possibly go wrong and then everything goes wrong so that's part of the fun so I saw something absolutely amazing in a, a painting video a while back. I think it was, was it Duncan? Probably Duncan Rose. Just, you know, freehanding uh, insignia on, on a, uh, yeah, that was a Space Marine uh, shoulder. And I kind of went, how, how do people freehand this? I mean, I cannot paint. I cannot, <clears throat> um... You know, I'm not good at normal painting or you know, drawing with you know uh, pencils or tush, whatever that's called, markers, anything like that. Um, and yeah, you're absolutely right. The whole it's gonna be fine. It's great setup, classic setup for any great story. Absolutely. No, but I mean, just seeing them draw, I think it was something like an eagle um, being painted on the shoulder. You know, the, the, the classic or, um, or sort of you know, eagle wings, stylized eagle wings. And I kind of just went, how, how do you freehand that on a mini this size? I mean, I have a hard enough time painting the mini as it is. And then adding, you know, freehand details as well is just mind-bogglingly. Uh, my my mind-bogglingly well done. Um, but yeah. But hey, <clears throat> I can do other things. It's uh, it's actually a kind of a good lesson to learn here that I'm sometimes struggling with myself. Is to not. I mean, it's good to compare yourself to others because that shows you, you know, where you can improve and where you can get better. But just don't only do that. Don't only compare yourself with others because that's just going to be typically you going, oh shit, there's someone better than me. Because you know, chances are, let's be realistic, chances are there will always be someone in the world who's better at doing whatever you're doing. Uh, unless you're absolutely the best person in the world for this, your world champion, then yeah, sure, no one is better than you. You know, until next year when someone younger and fresher and stronger comes around, or whatever the field we're talking about. Um, but instead, just to kind of look at 
how you feel about the stuff you're doing. I mean, are you happy with the results? It doesn't matter if, if you know, there's tens of thousands of people who can, who can do better. If you're happy with what you're doing, then it's perfect. Uh, that so, somehow my mind just jumped to a really fun day I had uh, Sunday. Me and a good friend went to one of the Christmas markets up here north of Copenhagen, uh, Bernstorff Slut, and I had a very pleasant talk with their Santa, who actually, in, in all honesty and, and seriousness, suggested that I should get like a uh, sort of free time job or spare time job, whatever, as a Santa Claus because of the beard. He had a wonderful and magnificent beard himself. Uh, he was you know, old enough for it to be fully white, which I'm really looking forward to mine. So when mine becomes really white, not just kind of half gray-ish as it is now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I have considered it a couple of times, you know, not seriously, but just kind of gotten the idea. Um, and then just let it go because yeah, whatever. I mean, I, I have a full time job and so on. But I mean, just like I'm volunteering at a board game cafe because I think it's fun and, and I like games and so on. I mean, the idea of just standing for a day, handing out small cookies to people. I don't know that that actually seems kind of attractive to me. That idea. I'm just going leery eyed from looking at this, but I will read what you wrote in a little bit. You write through and then think about all the peeps who might not know your trade or does it as good as you. I mean, my hobby always say that he's amazed how I can sit down and plot a story. He say himself that he would never be able to do that exactly. I mean, if you really, really want to go out and compare yourself with, with other people, Remember to compare yourself to everyone. I mean, that way you're just going to see that what you can do, you know, just like there's going to be people who are better than you, <clears throat> you're also going to be a lot better than so many more people. So, so that's like a valuable lesson to, to remember when you know, doing these things. And... You know, with painting, for instance, I have never had any aspirations to winning prizes or anything like that. And if you want to learn a lot about techniques and just see how it's executed perfectly, go watch other content creators because I'm just someone having fun painting minis for myself and my friends. Um, that's, that's what I get out of it. And... I get this this really calming effect of being away from the screen. I mean, I know I'm streaming, but I do look at the minis most of the time, even when streaming. And that just really helps me sort of, you know, unwind. And as much as I can complain about it being frustrating to reach different part of the mini, it's actually really sort of um, what's called de-stressing, anti-stressing for me. So, and yeah, you know, I get a physical product out of it. I have something in my hand that I've you know, made. I'm playing around with the different techniques, you know, the creativity of that, but also kind of the consistency. You can't just copy paste this. It's not like you can just go, oh, I painted one mini like this. I'm just going to copy paste. Now I have 10 minis. I, I kind of like that. You have to, you know, work on every single one individually. And if, you know, for instance, here, I don't usually do this kind of, um, kind of like edge highlighting with the green stuff going around here. Um, the green lines it's kind of like it's highlighting that's why I said it's gonna be good 
practice for when I do the, the Stormtrooper Marines. <clears throat> because they, they're going to need to have a lot of this. Uh, but because I don't have a steady hand, I don't often do it. But on this mini, it's part of the, the paint scheme. So naturally I'm doing it. And it's actually going far better than I expected. Which is roughly now that I'm going to make some huge blunder and paint half his leg green or something like that. But yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Me, it's a, it's a good point about um, you know what you and your husband talked about. The whole, what can you do that other people can't? Really important to remember. Just like if you feel like you're always two steps behind, and there's always so many things you have to do, and you're always you know looking at this very long endless to-do list <coughs> I found it really really helpful to start uh, start keeping track of not only the things you need to do it's good to keep track of them because otherwise you might forget something important but keep track preferably for me in a physical way keep track of all the things you have done instead of only having a to-do list have a done list when you've done something then put a piece of paper or a post-it note uh, or whatever. Um, you know, put a post have if you have a whiteboard uh, where you write these things down. Um, have a column for I did that, I did that, I did that. You know, all done, all done, all done. Um, that way, all of a sudden, you know, at the end of a day or the end of a week or whatever, when you you kind of feel really bad about all the things you haven't done, just go. Oh, oh, not all the things you haven't, all the things you're missing. Mm. And go take a look at the very long list of things you've actually done so far. And I bet you that list is going to be long. And it's going to be a lot of things you've forgotten about. Uh, we tend to forget the things we've done and only focus on the things we're missing. So, yeah. Painting and giving random advice about life. I really should be a Santa Claus. But at the same time, I also kind of have this, what if I run into people I know? I mean, the people I know and care about, they would just think it was fun. <clears throat> Ah, oh, thank you. Me thinks I would make a great Santa. Yeah, I kind of sort of halfway think that myself, but it's kind of kind of sort of you know going the, the all the way there is still a little daunting. <clears throat> okay, so we need we need some black. We need a little bit of black on his back. Hmm. Um, yeah, about his hair, it kind of looks like a pale brown. Is that sort of um, roughly correct? Yeah, dark blonde. Okay. I will try my best to make that happen. I um, have some ideas, but I'm not entirely sure. And I, I still have so little experience with the, the dip later on that I don't really know exactly how the colors are going to you know, end up. But I think just going for a not, you know, fully 
uh, light brown. We're starting out with a sort of mid-tone brown and then <clears throat> lightening it up a little bit. I think that's going to be good. No, I'm, I'm going to mix up a color and we'll, we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Is this actually still in frame at all? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but I, I don't know. Um, sort of like... When is, when is something blonde? When isn't it? When is it brown? When is it light brown? You know, all those things. I mean, I should know the colors better, but sometimes the details of them, or, or rather the naming of them, is kind of like, yeah, okay, so we can do that. It's just I kind of have a gap in my my um, color colors. I mean, you, you can buy almost an infinite infinite number of premix colors of you know different um, tones and you know blends and cold or white, cold or, or warm brown and so on. You can you can get a lot of those uh, by now. Um, but since I don't want to have like 200 bottles of paint hanging around on, on my desk, um, I kind of sort of go for the, well, I buy, I will buy, you know, a specific brown or whatever if I'm actually painting minis that have it so I don't have to mix it all the time. But I still have some gaps, so I don't really, I have sort of a reddish brown and a kind of yellowish brown. And then I have to go all the way up to a, a rather pale, uh, I don't know if it's khaki, um, if that's the, the right word for it. I have to go all the way up to that for the next sort of brighter step. So so I do have some, I say some, some gaps in the color range. That's fine. There it was again. It's fine. It's gonna be fine. Not a problem. It's all good. Now for time, one hour and twenty-two minutes, including you know, from from I went online, so that's fine. It's about an hour and fifty minutes painting. Uh, Hmm. I mean, one of the things I've always struggled with when painting is painting quickly and precisely. <clears throat> so that's again, you know, comparing with other people. I would love to be able to paint faster, but that's mostly because then I get more minis painted. Plus, another thing to remember when you're when painting minutes, I mean, 
I see a lot of things that I would call mistakes when I paint. Uh, but I am also sitting here looking at the model through a magnifying glass and you know, holding it right all the way up to the, the magnifying glass. So of course I'm going to see uh, see some, some mistakes, but it's just not going to be visible once it's actually on the table or on your shelf or wherever it, it ends up. <clears throat> it's really only because I have it right in my face. Um, and magnified. What I'm doing here is actually touching up a few of the places I just went over really quickly before. Um, that's because this is actually going to be painted yellow. And painting yellow over a darker color is, for me at least, really hard. <clears throat> and meet the rights that they will most likely be placed on my desk and on the shelf behind my laptop so I'll be able to see them while writing oh that's good I mean that that's you know, part of the whole point with this exercise or this uh, competition or whatever um, is to get people some inspiration for when they write so I'm happy to hear that That, that's that. Go. Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> hmm. Now we need. We need the yellow in a little bit. Hmm. Do. That is the handle of the hammer <coughs> that we can paint now. I also really am losing my voice now. That is uh, not really good. But anywho... So the handle here is actually kind of dark in Hero Forge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it all the way black and then hope that some of the, uh, the varnish um, makes it, gives it just a tint, a little bit of a tint, so it gets a little bit of color. <clears throat> and that way it will still be super dark, but it's going to have a little bit of a um, sort of brownish color to it, like really dark wood. And then the leather straps up near the head. I'm not going to paint that black. I'm going to paint that a, uh, a dark brown. So it's actually going to be something that's going to be somewhat difficult to see, actually. Um, but I've, I'm pretty confident with, with that, uh, that effect.
Rise that it has helped. I mean, the the hero fort models <coughs> has helped to visualize characters a bit better. So yeah, hero has been my new favorite procrastination tool. But I did figure out how Mia's father might look, both in human form and dragon shooter form. Yeah, I saw the uh, the pictures you posted of of that. <coughs> I mean, it's it's kind of like you know the the classic saying of uh, an image. What saying the same as a thousand words, or whatever the saying actually goes. An image is a thousand words, and it is because you can see so many things, especially the the whole color thing, color aspect of of doing this is really nice in in Hero Forge. <clears throat> A couple of things, you no know, small tricks for painting that I've picked up along the way. Um, my hands are generally really shaky, uh, but something that really helps is just instead of trying to sit here, you know, with the miniature in one hand and the brush in the other hand, what I do is I just sort of gently just put two fingers together because then my, at least my my shaking, you know, from one hand to the other, is kind of synchronized. So it's uh, it's really really helpful just holding your fing your, your hands or fingers together. I mean, if you have some weight as well, like the painting handle and so on, it's going to be even better um, because the more weight you have, the less your your fingers are going to shake because it's it's if it, it requires more energy to to move a weight as opposed to just moving your hands. <clears throat> but if you also you know, press your, your hands together. So other people will actually do it like this, pressing the, the palms of their uh, palms together, or as well as the, the base of their hands. Um, I find that a little difficult also, you know, to get it underneath the, the lamp. Um, I have the, the lamp with the magnifying glass in it. Um, so I considered getting some magnifying glasses that I can wear. Um, but we'll see. <clears throat> so the anvil, I'm gonna paint. <coughs> oh, thank you. Four minutes after eleven. Oh, I spent far too long going over color options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that goes completely off on. Um, what's called Hero Forge. Thank you, uh, Vanessa. Four minutes, well, five minutes now, past 11. I, I kind of keep a track on how long I've been painting. Um, it's not like it's gonna you know, ruin my day tomorrow if, if I do paint until midnight, because I'd rather have him painted and then um, since I'll be away over the weekend, I can just Dumping, dunk him tonight, and he can and rest for a couple of days. Um, so that's uh, it's gonna be super. 
And I think I'm actually going to do the um, the anvil after the 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 varnish, because I want to make that proper black. I mean, for the uh, air hammer here, I think it's going to be be fine uh, to have a little bit of brown tint on the on the handle. But the anvil should be solid. Well, it's metal of some kind. I don't even know what what anvils are usually made of. Um, I fortunately don't have to to know such things. But it should definitely be like a clean black, and then some some edge highlighting on it to make it look super good. So it's also going to sort of serve as a kind of not centerpiece for the model, but as kind of a, a detail that's going to stand out a little bit. Um, I often use the bases of my minions for, for that. Uh, probably give an example in a little bit. Just need, you know, I just need to get this color done, then I'll then I'll go do other stuff. No, um, but showing some, have some some of the uh, minions I've painted recently. Um, the robot legion from a game called One Page Rules. Well, the company is called One Page Rules. The games are called Grim Dark Future and Grim Dark Future Firefight is their skirmish game. And I just played around and those models, I wanted to get them painted super quickly. Not that I really expect to actually play with them at any point, but um, that's also kind of a great motivator for not using too much time, not spending too much time painting those minis. <clears throat> because if I spend two or three hours per mini and paint like 10 minis, that's going to be a, a full work week in my spare time. Whereas if I spend what I did for this for 20, 25 minutes per, per mini, And it's depicted just a single day. I go find one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I've showed off these ones before. Um, let's just get these ones out of the way. <clears throat> this one in here. But I mean, the bases here <coughs> were actually fairly easy to create. Uh, let's go big on that one. <clears throat> but it's very a very simple uh, thing to do that also gives a really great effect because it adds a lot of three-dimensional stuff or whatever to the to the miniature. And I find that, you know, if you look at the um, tripod thingy, <clears throat> it is literally just uh, a black primer and then dry brushing in metal. I think I didn't even do the eyes, did I? Maybe if I did, it was a little bit of red. So those um, that kind of paint scheme doesn't take a long time, but it also looks extremely boring <coughs> until you do the base. Because then the base kind of takes over, it becomes a part of the miniature. Um, and then it's just way more interesting to look at. And you, your eyes is just kind of, at least it's how I feel, it's kind of being pulled into the, the base as much as the rest of the mini. And then as a whole, it looks really, really good when it's on the, uh, on the table. Exactly, and also what I used is one of the, the technical paints from Citadel called uh, Martian Stone Earth, which actually crackles. So the small lines you may or may not be able to see <clears throat> actually crackles through the top layer, which just gives um, even more of a 3D effect. So yeah, so it's uh, so many things going on. Um, <clears throat> And the best thing about you know the, the the crackle paints and technical paints is that you really just have to put on a layer and just wait for it to dry. It, it crackles on its own. What I usually do is I 
you know, make sure that I paint the surface underneath it in um, either in, in a suitable color like here or in different colors to give like a an effect of um, what's it called? Effect of, of I should put it uh, kind of a, like a lava effect. Yeah, I hate painting yellow. I'm painting yellow over brown and I get effectively green. That's marvelous. I'm sure clever people would be able to explain why that is and why the pigments of yellow are always so difficult to get to cover um, the existing paint but again as so often this is also a matter of you know just trusting just trusting the process <clears throat> and just giving it multiple layers I mean you can already see now that it actually has that yellow tint I'm just gonna let it dry and just come I'm gonna come back to it in a little bit give it another layer it's gonna be slightly more yellow and another layer slightly more yellow And I mean, basing in itself is also, I would say in many ways, as big a hobby as painting the miniatures themselves. Um, because you can get so many different materials and you have so many different techniques for doing the, the, the bases. Um, in many ways, it's closer to actually doing you know, war game terrain. Or you know, if you know anyone who has you no know, model trains, stuff like that. <clears throat> Doing all the hills and those those things. So yeah. There we go. Now it's actually turning yellow. Which you of course cannot see because I'm still showing the large rotating thing. <clears throat> Why don't we do something about that? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely I can. Here we go. <clears throat> so we have some yellow lines that actually look Kinda yellowish. So yeah, Timothy is getting closer to being finished. There's still something on the, the scabbard which, um, that is not, you know, fully painted yet, but it's um, a lot of the silver. I want to do that after I've done the, the dunk or the dip, as people call it. Um, <clears throat> and mostly that's just because I want it to you know, really be shiny and it's not going to be that if it then gets you know the the brown varnish over it i also found another cat hair isn't that wonderful Hmm. 
This is an annoying hair. There we go. Uh, yeah, here we, again we have the belt going in behind the hammer and all of that, so it's, uh, that's gonna be fun. So, classic technique, when I reach a spot that I need to paint that's kind of troublesome, ignore it and go paint someplace else if you can, and then just let it sit for a while wondering, you know, should I take a <clears throat> smaller brush or just not care about it too much and just get it, you know, painted and <clears throat> fix any mistakes I make afterwards, you know, kind of just it's simmer for a little bit. <laughs> Yay. Great big cat hair in the middle of the brush. <clears throat> He's actually way more challenging to paint than I had first thought when I saw him. I like that. It's really good. It's good practice. This very small part of the belt <clears throat> that's right next to his arm and they're actually so close <clears throat> that I feel like I can't even get a brush in there like the blood brush is kind of feels like it's too thick and yeah it's absolutely it's, it's good to be challenged with these things I mean it's a, it's a great learning opportunity on surface it looks simple but deep down he's a bit more complex fits his personality yeah 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 that's perfect i mean it's a uh, it's a good way of you know remembering that sort of the stereotypical strong weaponsmith so on it's just he's still a person he still has uh, his layers shrek did not live in a die in vain no, on Living way, I don't know if this Shrek ever dies, but you know, you know what I mean. I 
And we have the <clears throat> on the straps on his backpack as well. Need to be yellow. And again, there's some some buckles here on on the uh, straps on the backpack. But I'm gonna do those after shading him. Yeah, I'm glad that that I'm not the only one who actually gets Shrek ref references. I guess it's beginning to be so old, or the movies are beginning to be so old that it's um, not something you can take for granted anymore. So another thing that I'm probably going to be printing very soon, actually some kind of a blast from the past for me, <clears throat> somewhere back in the mid to late 90s, I played a game called Battletech, which is also by some people known as Mech Warrior. This is this kind of huge ass, um, not robots, but combat, well, they're called mechs. <clears throat> Um, and they're just piloted by what's known as mech warriors and it's kind of a strategy game where your 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 mechs battle mechs would be running around on hex grid in the game and you know blah 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 long story short uh, I, the, the the site humble bundle who always has you know usually far better offers than you'll find you during Black Week in, in Denmark on many things. They've collected PDFs, uh, you know, made an agreement with people doing the, the current version of, of the game Battletech and have them on sale at the moment at a very reasonable price. And I'm seriously considering buying it, partly because it's kind of nostalgic to have all these books and just read up on, on you know, the lore and what's been going on in that game world. Uh, but also because I actually, a couple of months ago, came across uh, a guy who did a lot of the, the mech, the mechs, um, as free STLs, no, for free files for 3D printing. So I got a bunch of them, and actually they're pretty much just ready to print. I have all of it, so I would actually be able to print so many of the models needed for it. Um, I don't know, it's, I might have to do it, I think it's like $25 or so, $30 plus whatever you want to donate, so. And of course that would be like, I don't know, hundreds of pages of rules and lore that I'm never going to read anyway, so. Um, he says that, no, her kids have not seen them yet, could ask them, but they we were not interested in Shrek. Well, that's um. I don't know if that's no, not. It's not sad as such. It's just uh, interesting. But yeah, I don't know if you know this whole good old-fashioned oh this game series, book series, whatever. Super interesting. I remember that. Blah blah blah. And then you know after buying it, it's just gonna go on the shelf and you're gonna read it. So. I would probably as much buy them to support the charity. Um, the Humble Bundle donates a lot to charity and makes these deals for that. Um, and at least it would be PDFs, so they wouldn't actually physically take space on my 
my shelves. But it's, um, might be worth a shot. I mean, Battletech is kind of a, a fun game to play. It's kind of like what one of, one of my friends um, call a beer, and, a beer and pretzel kind of game. I mean, you, you can play it competitively. You can go you know, all in on, you know, taking it super serious and stuff like that because it is, you know, it has rules. It's pretty balanced and, and all that. But at the same time, it's kind of sort of lighthearted. Yeah, let's just go have fun kind of game. So some nostalgic, um, a few nostalgic moments. Maybe, you know, print out a couple of battle mechs. And just read up on the rules, go play a few game, games with friends. That could be fun. You know, that day when I have time for all of that, when I'm not finally getting around to playing the OPR games and... But hey. So, um, anyway, let's see, because I actually have a suggestion for a color for his hair. And I don't know how well you can see it. I'll just get a larger brush. <clears throat> I tried painting it, not on him, but just... Uh, a little bit like, like that. I don't know how, how clearly it, it comes through. It kind of retains the, the sandiness, or sand colored thing, but still having a bit of the dark brown to it. And then it, it of course, will get shaded, so, but that's kind of going to be the color that's going to shine through the, the shading. So, perfect. Mia approves. So let's get his hair painted. What else do I actually need to paint? I think his hair is actually the uh, last bit. And yeah, I also noticed that there's a printing mistake on his hair as well. I do apologize for that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, well, I have some idea when things started going a little bit wrong again with my 3D printer, um, I changed the, it's known as the FEP film, FEP film. And after that, it's done some, some weird misprints that I haven't seen before. So I'm guessing it's either tighter or probably more tight than the old one. And that's gonna, you know, affect the way that the prints leave the, uh, the film and stuff like that. But, I'm not sure if I need to calibrate it or if the film kind of just needs to be broken in or whatever. But that's... the only annoying thing is that I didn't actually catch it immediately after the print. Uh, that is just a print in a new miniature with you know, these slightly different settings. But I mean, as long as you look at him from the front, it's not all bad. And I may actually just do a new one for you as well, just for my own sake of you no know, completeness. We'll see. Depends a little bit on um, how busy I'm going to be the next next couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, you can see it a little bit when I'm sort of turning him around. Um, it, it takes about almost 10 hours to print the minis. Um, but I mean, the, the printer is just doing its thing. It's not like I'm, I'm actively looking at it or you know, working on it. So it's just a matter of, of letting it do its thing. I usually just um, start the, the print job in the morning and then when I come home in, in the evening or you know, after dinner, whatever. Uh, then it's going to be done. I mean, I could probably print it a lot faster. It has to do with the the um, it's called layer thickness, which I set fairly low for these minis because I want them to actually look look at, as good as possible. Um, if I print uh, with a thicker layer. 
it's very linear in the time consuming and how much time it consumes. Uh, I think these are 0 0.02 millimeters. If I change that to 0 0.04 millimeters, it is literally going to take about half the time because it's only going to print half as many layers. So. But, you know, especially with the Hero Forge miniatures, which are pretty detailed, my experience is that it's, um, it's actually worth it, you know, spending that extra time. And again, the printer is just doing a thing. It doesn't use more resin. It doesn't, you know, it's just runs for a bit longer. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no, it's just, um, it's just standing on its own. I mean, I have a couple of, you know, safety precautions, like, of course, making sure that the cat cannot get into the room because the, the fumes from the, the 3D printing, printing process are toxic. And even though they, the printers do have filters now, so they take care of a lot of it, I do not want myself or my cats or anyone else to be near those fumes at all. So, you know, closed door, open window. Um, that might actually be the thing because people say that it's something with, you know, the, the temperature affects um, how well it, it prints and if it's too cold the resin is not gonna work well it's probably gonna be slower flowing or whatever so that might be something as simple as that but anywho yeah it says gonna be it literally it, it literally looks like someone is just taking like a, an iron you know, for your know, iron clothes and just put it down on, on the side of his head. But hey. Okay, cool. You know, I think we're there. Hmm. So while I go prep the um the what's called thinger with big thing Vanish. I'm just gonna put him over here so you can see how it looks. Also, gonna say hello to the cat. <clears throat> I mean, that didn't turn out half bad. Right, so, uh, Vanish. And some annoying people have pointed out, no, not people watching the stream or anything, but other people have pointed out that you can actually just use a brush to apply the varnish. And I have actually done that in the past, and yeah, you get pretty much the same result. And thank you, you think it looks awesome and amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's good, it's gonna be even better once we have better shading. Um, but I, I think, you know, both because I like the, the absurd concept of dipping the miniatures. I, I gotta admit, that has kind of a um, an attraction to me. I think it's kind of fun. It's a fun process. And additionally, I really, um, you know, when doing the uh, with, with a brush, the times I've used that, it's kind of missed a little bit of depth because it wasn't really, really soaking into the miniature. Um, and the way it pools is a little bit affected by, you know, the brush strokes and all that. And even though it, it actually, um, what's the word, it, it kind of sort of spreads out a little bit, you know, after, <clears throat> after you, you've done 
brushing it on. It's always kind of sort of, to, to me it's always felt like it's a little bit um, off. Some, some difference. But we now have joy of doing that and I have plenty of paper towels handy. More to paper towels handy just for <clears throat> when I'm done. So, what should we... Yeah. Let's put the other minis up there. So. So, me, are you ready for... Dipping him in the varnish. <clears throat> You're ready? Okay. So we're gonna take this, again, this reasonably well-painted mini. And we're actually gonna use that I have an anvil here. That's gonna be a good good thing to hold on to. See, it seems it's Timothy Faber on the bottom. And we're just gonna dunk him in here. There he goes. All gone, all the way down. I'm not even gonna try to make any kind of joke about dropping him and see how absolutely, completely and utterly horrible it looks now. <clears throat> but I mean, at the same time, you can see the yellow in his belt uh, still kind of you know, peeping through and yeah. This is where the paper towel comes in. Now, again, it's 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 really great that you actually have you know hours for this to to dry out. To the bottom here, we can actually put him down like that. It's really just gonna soak into the tissue here, help it a little bit. Now, what I noticed last time with Gasty, and I also can see it kind of a bit here, was that the first time you shake it, it doesn't you know, shake fall off because of the viscosity um, so so thick the varnish. But after shaking it a couple of times, I've kind of made it run down a little bit, um, so it can actually I can actually um, shake it off. So that's kind of that's kind of you know, it's it's fun you know to try out these techniques and see how it works. Yeah, you can see his hair. You can see his, you know I also I get this all over myself at the moment. It doesn't seem to be actually going on my clothes or anything like that. It it stays the paper towel, but I have got a little bit of it on my my fingers. But again, it's fine. And yeah, you can see this kind of this dark spot on his head um, that's because his hair messed up in, in the print job so we're just gonna stick him there for a while because what I want to do is I actually want to take um, <clears throat> just my small brush it's a, a cheap brush that's I'm absolutely completely abusing for these things um, but I'll use that to soak up uh, a bunch of the varnish so let's close that one. And I mean, a can this size is gonna last me. I mean, this was made for people who wanna, you know, paint our entire armies. And I'm not, which means that it's just gonna take it's gonna last forever so it's usually pooling down next to his uh, feet and stuff like that and it, because it's still just flowing freely and basically just scrape it off and and some new is gonna get in here besides I really only mostly wanted in the the recessed recesses recessed areas so you can just easily help it a little bit 
And then also this entire, no, the, the V neck here is just digging it out. So it back in. I mean, maybe it would be just as easy to just add it with, you know, a normal paintbrush. I should try that on another mini because I'm, you know, sitting around cleaning it up anyway afterwards, so. Again, it's, for me, it's also, again, this new process where I don't really know exactly what is going on. Um, still still learning this, so... And I'm still getting used to the fact that it gets so shiny and dark at the same time. It's kind of a weird effect. Uh, and, and it does mean that the colors are all... Um, I was just about to say perverted, which they're not, but they're all kind of sort of um, different. Um, they they kind of kind of disappear the colors. Um, actually, I might as well just dig out the entire hammerhead there. It's like if, if, as if the colors have disappeared and. Partly because of the glossiness, but also the, the brown <clears throat> tone of the varnish. I mean, as the more I can actually remove from the hammer, uh, the easier it's probably going to be when I have to, to cover it with the gray again to, to make it look good. Um, in Hero Force Me, it made the, the, the hammer head more sort of a light, light gray. So yeah. I mean, so far it's uh, looking good. Still a lot of this pulling at his feet. But I mean, that that, that makes sense. I mean, this, that's because it works as it should. It's just gravity pulling it down. Then eventually it will end at his feet and have nowhere to go. That's also why it's not a big problem that I'm just sort of half scraping it off. Because it's going <clears> to... <throat> going to be new stuff coming down there anytime. Just clean off his boots a little bit. Yeah. So I really do think that... Ah, oh, his, his face is actually looking wonderful. Now I'm afraid to pick him up because I don't want to leave any fingerprints in this. That I don't think would go well. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, this is uh, this really is good. Uh, a little bit out there, a little bit out here. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go back and try you know, brushing it on. Yeah, it's gonna leave a really weird shadow where where there's a misprint, but it's not that visible from the front, and still gonna be good looking in the end. So, <clears throat> um, I can't take a, a good picture of him yet because, no, it is a little difficult to handle, but I will take something and send it to you so you at least have an idea of how he looks. And other than that, I will say thank you for staying up late. It is a quarter to midnight, so my goal of not turning this into a midnight session, <clears throat> we succeeded. I just want to make absolutely sure that he is not going to stick to anything. So let's, uh... Yeah, I've got a small piece of paper I used for Gasty as well, just to, to leave him on for when he's drying. So, yeah. And, yeah, I made it before midnight. That's wonderful. 
and you've been as always great company and uh, i like painting i would you know paint on my own but it's so much more fun i found to you know have the company and just talk about random shit and random stuff so we managed to get two hours done we managed to i was just about to say do ghastly again but no uh painted up timothy so me I will send you a picture in a little bit, so just have an idea about how it looks uh, up close. And then also to for comparison after the uh, matte varnish is on. And let's just see, do we know anyone? No one interesting is online, so we're not going to do a raid. We're just going to say thank you for tonight. And it's been great fun having you here. And as always, as I said, always say, the music has been um, Adrian von Siegler. There's going to be a link in the description. And the info music was Secret Muse by my good friend Chilean. And well, it's been a pleasure. Keep on writing for the Nano Remo. I know you're both over 50,000 words, but that shouldn't stop you. And to anyone else who's out there writing, you still have almost a week. So, yeah. Have a great evening.